Garrett G here with Precision Rifle Media. Kirk asked me to go through my gear that I take to matches. Every match is a little different. Kind of depends on whether it's a single day match, two day match, whether whether or not you get the match book ahead of time, stages, things like that. This is generally what I take. A little different every time, but you'll get the gist of it. So the first thing I'm going to go through is my belt. I carry an HSGI slim grip padded belt with just a few basic things on it. Triad Tactical AW Mag Pouch. I like it because I can carry two AW mags. I shoot AIAXs, so I'm running AW AX mags. Two of them fit nicely in here. It is adjustable, so if I only need one, I can use the drawstrings here to basically tighten it down. Also, I have a Kestrel pouch from them. Real simple, real basic. I like to try to have my Kestrel on my person just in case something gets messed up. Got to have a blow, or bleed out, blow out kit. Mine's pretty basic. Just some tape. You pull a strap. Keep everything in a plastic bag so if I have to I can improvise a chest seal. I run a simple tourniquet, pressure bandage, and then a 5x9 bandage on the back side. Also carry an HSGI hoagie pouch. You can use it for anything from brass to extra tools, pens, markers, extra sheets for your data board, whatever it may be. I also carry my Kestrel. I run a 5700 Sportsman. I don't need, you know, umpteen number of different profiles and things like that. I pretty much run three calibers. I run a 6XC, a 308, and a 65 Creedmoor. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If in the future I do need something more, I can always just upgrade the software. I run an Armageddon Gear bungee sling. I like it because the bungee kind of absorbs some of the weight of my rifle. And I also like it because of the built-in loop for standing, sitting, kneeling, and offhand prone shots. As far as bags, I try to keep it pretty simple. Um, I'll go through my gear locker here in a little bit, but this is what I take to most matches. I try to keep it simple, keep it lightweight. I'm running an Armageddon Gear soft bag. It's a little softer than your typical rear bag, a little more spongy. Um, I don't know what the fill is. The material is more of like a nylon rather than your typical Cordura. It's nice because for some of those stages where the target might be uphill or downhill or multiple targets at different heights, you can get a little more adjustment out of it. Everybody knows what this is. It's a game changer bag. I've used it on everything from prone stages where you turn it upside down and set your rifle in it like that, to window stages, roof stages, barricade stages. I've even used it on the simple V-shaped fence posts. There it's a little difficult because the weight tends to want it to shift one way or another, but it's still doable and still a lot better than trying to rest your rifle on it. I carry an arm board as well. I believe this is from RE Factor, if I remember correctly. Um, I keep it pretty basic. I still have data in here from the gap grind back in October, but generally speaking, if I don't do my data the night before, I leave everything blank on the front page and then just use a dry erase marker to write data for each stage. A lot of that depends on weather conditions day to day, hour to hour, things like that. On the inside, I actually keep um, two data pages from my impact data books page sheets. Basically one is a range card, the half circle. I use that for bigger matches like South Dakota where it's more of a field match and you're going to have targets kind of spread out. That way if I forget where a target is or I need to draw in some landmarks to kind of remind myself where targets are, I can do that. On the bottom is just another page similar to that except it's more of just um, a first person view. Don't use it all that often, but it's nice to have in case I do need to use it. Also carrying a Coltac brass bag. I like this because rather than trying to slide brass back into an ammo box or into my ammo wallet, which I'll show here in a second, I can just drop brass in here and do it all at the end of the day. Still trying to decide if I'd rather run this on my belt rather than the pogey pouch or if it's better suited just keeping in my backpack. 
The other piece of equipment that I'm going to be trying out this year, haven't had the opportunity to try one, is the Coltec um, ammo wallet. Nice thing about this is instead of the typical 20 or 40 rounds, this actually holds 80. And I know mine, I can actually get more into it if I actually cram more ammo into the end loops. But it's essentially designed for 80. Has a nice little slot for either a card with your name on it, what kind of ammo you're shooting. Also has Molly on the back. Highly doubt I'm going to use that just because they're small enough I can slide right into my backpack. I might use it in the occasion where weather is going to be an issue throughout the day. Here in Wisconsin, we can start days down in the 20s and finish in the 50s and 60s. So you might start with some kind of jacket on and end up transitioning to just a t-shirt by the end of the day. Kind of depends. To carry it all, I'm running a Mystery Ranch 3-Day Assault Pack. It's pretty basic. I like it because it's a good mix between like the Burla Stock Gunslinger 2, which I do have and I have run in the past. It's almost a little too big. And just a simple like 511 Rush 24 or Rush 48 fact pack. The nice thing about these, I'll show you here quick, is they actually open up in three different directions. So it's pretty easy to get to different gear if you need to. Kind of looks like if you've ever seen Aliens, the eggs when they open up has three different zippers and it opens up pretty wide so you can get to everything. I've crammed everything from rain gear plus bags plus the big 100 round ammo boxes. Has some side pouches for tools if you need it. Um, has a nice mesh pouch on top that's actually pretty large. This is where I used to put my brass but I think I'm going to use it for binoculars or maybe a range finder. And then it has a nice protective pouch in the front for wallets, phones, keys, things like that. And then because everybody likes Velcro and likes morale patches, of course it has a place for morale patches. You can also put water bottles on the inside if you need to as well. Or if you have a camelback, you can throw that in there. On the sides, it has places for either water bottles, snacks. I do slide my tripod in here if I feel I'm gonna need it for a match and then just cinch it down with the straps. I'll go through all that in a little bit. Also on the front, not sure if you can see them, but I'm running um, triple lot design carabiners. They're just plastic carabiners. They're designed to rip apart. Pretty basic. I use it to carry my bags on the outside. Sometimes I'll grab a fat bag from Armageddon gear and sling it by the lanyard on here if I think I need it. Otherwise I can run my um, rear bag on there. This gets to be a little heavy even though it will work. Alright so now I'm going to walk you through my gear cabinet. This is all stuff that gets used depending on the match whether it's a single day, two day match, weather dependent, terrain dependent, um, what you take down to a place like K&M where it's an actual established range with awnings over the top of your firing positions versus a place like the South Dakota Steel Classic where you're essentially shooting field positions with no protection from the weather. Kind of dictates what you take for a match. So regardless of the match, I always have some kind of ear pro. Kind of depends on whether or not I'm shooting suppressed or not. Generally speaking, I try to shoot suppressed. Um, basically, I'm running a Yankee Hill Phantom M2 for the time being. However, I will be switching over to a TVAC as soon as I get approval from the ATF. I'm sitting at right about 165 days right now from when they charged my card. So hopefully in the next week or two I actually get approval. Up here is some of just the extra gear that I run. Running an extra Mystery Ranch 3-day assault pack. My fiance shoots matches with me once in a while. So I have a pack for her. It's actually the old generation. I picked it up off their clearance rack. I actually like it a little better than the new generation just because it has two extra sleeves on the outside that I can run a tripod in. Or if I have to ditch a jacket right before a stage or something or throw a sweatshirt into one of the sleeves, I can do that. Everybody knows the Midwest, especially the upper Midwest, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Michigan, South Dakota, North Dakota, gets really cold in winter. So I have basically a neck gear, some scarves, things like that, just to try and stay warm. Nothing sucks worse than being cold other than being cold and wet. 
every match I basically take my Magneto Speed B3. Um, basically, most of your two day matches and some of your one day matches give you an opportunity to check your zero, check your velocities before you shoot. Most of your two day Saturday and Sunday matches, they give you that opportunity on Friday. Your single day matches, if you get the opportunity, it's an hour or so before shooting starts. Kind of depends on the range rules, club rules, things like that. As far as gear, I've tried different things over the course of the year, whether it's at matches, whether it's hunting, things like that. Um, a couple of years ago, you've heard me and Kirk talk about it. We got caught kind of in um, the rain out in Colorado at the 2015 Snipers Hide Cup. Basically rained two days straight, three days straight. Didn't have any dry clothes left. I screwed up, thought I could get away with just a simple North Face hard, or soft shell jacket. Well, I was pretty much soaked through within the first couple hours of day one. Didn't have any dry clothes the rest of the weekend. So I went out and decided I had enough of that crap and decided to start buying good outdoor gear. Um, I'm kind of an Arc'teryx fanboy. So I have an Arc'teryx Alpha for rainy weather. And then I have two of their soft shells for either light rain, drizzle, sleet, things like that. Basically, just different jackets for different stuff. It is pricey, however, if you're patient and you watch for sales, things like that, you can get it fairly reasonable. Otherwise, just buy what you can afford, buy what you're comfortable with. A lot of guys like to run the Kuyu stuff, especially if they're hunters. Great pieces of kit. However, I run this stuff because it's what I can get and I get a little bit of a discount due to my job. As far as pants go, I've tried different things. I've done everything from jeans to basic 511 pants to the triple lot design pants, things like that. This year I'm gonna try the Cry Precision G3 Combat pants. Basically, I wanted something with knee pads. Um, my knees are a little beat up after almost 10 years of being a firefighter and I wanna try and protect my knees as much as I can. So I wanted something that had knee pads that I could slide in and out if I needed to. And I like American made stuff, so kind of seemed like a no brainer to me. As far as shirts goes, if it's hot out, I like to run more of the technical apparel. You see guys with the jerseys and things like that. I'm not a jersey guy. I'm not sponsored in any way, shape or form. So I pretty much run Under Armour, Reebok, Adidas. Um, I have a couple of Sitka shirts, things like that, just to try and stay cool and dry in some of the hot um, weather depending on where you're shooting. So footwear is a big thing. A lot of guys run tennis shoes, which is totally fine as long as the weather's decent and you're not running around in rocky terrain. Um, k and is a perfect example of that. It's a pretty much an established range. Most of your firing positions are either off of cement. They do have some gravel areas. They do have like their grinded out stage where you're shooting from a shoot house. So you're not really shooting from dirt or mud or off a of weird terrain, things like that. Whereas up in South Dakota or in Wisconsin where I shoot, it's raining or snowing essentially five or six months out of the year. And it's muddy and crappy and tennis shoes aren't the greatest for that. So I wear Solomon boots. Wear what's comfortable for you. I chose Solomon because they fit my feet like a glove. Some guys hate them, some guys love them, some guys like the Loas, some guys like Merrells. Some people swear by Rockies, some people swear by Danner. It all kind of depends on your foot and what you feel like wearing for the entire day. It's, again, trial and error. As far as actual match gear goes, I carry some different things. I run a full tool kit. Um, I'm shooting Accuracy International Rifles, so I'm running the Borka and the Fix-It Stick cool, or, uh, tool kit for switching out my barrels and torquing down all the screws and things like that. And also essentially I'm running a Vortex Optics um, scope tool for their scopes and then a simple um, Leatherman tool for anything else that I might run into. A couple different data books. I carry the small one with me to just about every match so that I can write down different things, whether it's round count, what I'm seeing at the match that day, keeping track of my data from day one to day two, things like that. I have a larger one that goes with me for load development and actual data collection at the range. That way I can compare my Kestrel to what I'm actually seeing on the range and try and true everything up so it's actually 
mirroring um, what I'm looking at just because electronics they do fail and reality of it is is where the bullet hits that's what the conditions are regardless of what your electronics are telling you you need to believe the bullet and what it's doing <clears throat> as far as other little things I carry extra 3x5 cards I run them for my dope card holder and then I also carry a spare set of notebooks for anything I might need on the side or if there was different things that I saw at the match or maybe there was a change in the stages that needs to be written down. Spotting scope. I'm not a big fan of taking spotting scopes with matches to me. It's just one more thing to carry. Um, some of the Border Wars matches, they request that you bring one if you can just because a lot of the squads, they self-spot or you spot for each other. And that way they don't have to have as many ROs on staff, which is... You know, it's kind of how this sport works. It's a give and take between the competitors and the match directors. So we try to kick in as much as we can. Down thing about downside on spotters is, is trying to scope out multiple targets at once. Like out in South Dakota, you have to zoom out quite a ways to get the field of view that you need. So to remedy that, I take a pair of binoculars with me for most of the large matches. That way I'm not lugging a spotting scope around with me to every stage. Scope cleaning kit, spare sunshade, and then I'm a big fan of wearing wristbands just to keep the sweat off my hands when I'm shooting in warm weather. I don't like wearing gloves, so. Down here uh, is one of my other bags. I don't take this to every match. Kind of depends on what I expect as far as stages go, but this is an Armageddon Gear fat bag. I use it to take up space, whether it's on your standing, kneeling, sitting stages, or to take up space on say like a tank trap or something like that. It's a nice bag. Sometimes I wish it was a little heavier, especially for like your tank trap stages because that would sit real nice in the middle. But all in all, a nice bag to have. As far as tripods go, um, decided to pick up one of the RRS tripods. Great piece of equipment. I was running a Manfrotto up until earlier this year. But now with the new dovetail accessories that are coming out, super nice, super light. I can throw it on the side of my pack without adding too much extra weight. That way I can use it, especially out in South Dakota where you're using kind of more of the field positions to help stabilize my rifle a little bit. Super nice to have, love it. If you don't feel like spending the money on the actual tripod but want one of the heads, they do make a universal head for like Manfrotto's and things like that. So just give them a call, they'll help you out. Super great company. Awesome to kind of see a photography based company get more into the shooting and actually dedicate a department to the shooting sports rather than just shooters adapting photography equipment to what they need. So. Thanks for watching. I'm Garrett G for Precision Rifle Media and hopefully we see you at a match.